Greetings, you precious potatoes, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Lathrix. And, of course, welcome to our newest full playthrough in the Gigastructural Engineering mod, where today our only goal is to test out the brand new origin, which is the Frame World. Now, this thing is utterly insane. It's very borg esque in its style, but we're not going to be playing it like that today. Today, we are here to showcase what would happen if the rogue caretakers, the malfunctioning nanny bots of the galaxy, were to awaken and become a crisis of their own. But before we get into the Empire itself, let's take a look see at the Frame World then. With the Frame World, we begin on a size 16 world, which can be upgraded multiple times. I don't know if there's any limit, and every time you upgrade it by adding a new district, it will actually upgrade the entire model to look bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, I've done a quick test run for about an hour, an hour and a half, and honestly, I am in love with this origin. Again, I adore the origins in Giga Structural Engineering. This one doesn't feel quite as brokenly strong with some of the really powerful ones, which I really love, but it does seem like one of those origins where it starts off a little bit slow, and then suddenly you are an utter powerhouse. Either way, it's going to be insanely fun. So our goal today is to collect every single organic in the galaxy for their own protection. We are here to rescue them, save them, and make sure that the galaxy is free from any strife and is permanently protected by us, the Convergence. And of course, we'll discuss more about the frame world once we're in the game itself, because there is so much to discuss. I've also had to install a UI mod, as you can probably tell here, link in the description, everything else. So things will look a little bit different throughout the game, but it's not too jarring, I find, so that's all well and good. We are a rogue servitor. We were created to rescue a species from total annihilation from an alien threat. The alien threat is no longer with us, perhaps, an endgame crisis of the past, and we were secluded on our little frame world. After millennia, though, we now realise, looking out into the galaxy, that every other organic is in danger, but we can protect them. We were created by the most revered of species. The humans. And from them, we will enact their will to protect everyone. Now, in my first test, I was playing as the Convergence, the Driven Assimilators, and I've got to be honest, I think this is the proper way of playing this origin, because you're going to get loads of populations thrown onto your world, and assimilating them probably a lot better than having biotrophies, which are only really going to give you unity, although they will give you a tiny bit of um, complex drone output, so hopefully once we have potentially thousands of them, that's going to pay off in the long run. We can only hope. So as for the robots themselves, they are of course emotion emulators, they are mass produced and they have learning algorithms. They are luxurious, created by the most revered of potatoes. So of course, they're pretty darn precious. As for the biotrophies, the humans, they are traditional, conservationists, and they are docile. So now, let's get into the game itself and hope that the organics don't resist our intervention. So we're going to be having everything as we normally do, however, what we are going to do is have the growth ceiling on the default setting here, rather than what we normally do. This is because, honestly, this origin, you can have plus 60, maybe even plus 100 on your growth rate of your machines. It can get really crazy. So I don't want to break the game that much. In my little test, it was already getting a little bit broken, so we're going to be leaving it like this. Now, there is ways of the origin to allow you to have all these unemployed pops, because there's a unique job which appears once you have too many, so it's not too bad, but it just didn't feel right without these in place. Even with these in place, we're still going to be growing pops at an, at an truly absurd rate. Okay, so with all that, let's get into the game. Oh, but before I do... One last mention, I will be doing the Katzen run very soon, I promise it's the very next full playthrough, because I do want to play an entire different empire for that, using the biological tree, and being able to create our own Scourge. It's a little bit crazy, but there is an entire clone vat mega structure, which you can only do if you are going down the biological ascension route, and that's what I want to do for that run. And that will probably be the last Giga Structural Engineering run for a while. But now! This origin, which may be the perfect origin. 
Hey everyone, as is tradition, future Lathrix here. First of all, to say that this origin has quickly become my new, new favourite origin out of all of the different origins Gigastructural Engineering can offer. The word origin is now sounding weird, but also, this is a bit of a spoiler, but it turns out even if you do ban the Katzen, they can still spawn in a far, far scarier form, which ended up being stronger than the endgame crisis so there is a much bigger threat in this playthrough than the normal endgame crisis even though L past lathrix takes a very long time to notice now sadly i am here as always to shill for the video these videos as we've seen in the past can be poison or absolutely fantastic for the channel if they get enough interaction so likes and comments help out massively thank you all so much for helping out the channel in the past and i absolutely love making these videos and that's the reason why i can still create them because of the interaction because of our YouTube overlords. So thank you so much for everyone helping out and I really do hope you enjoy the video. There's also a Twitter which I constantly post pet pictures and little spoilers for upcoming videos. The link to that is always in the description. It's at Lathrix as you might imagine. So with that, into the game itself with a really, really weird run. Saving every last organic in the galaxy. Every one of them. And so we begin near the top of the galaxy. So we're going to have everything as we normally do, except for we're not allowing the cats and all the blockets. That's not what we're testing out today. And I think that's everything. Okay, this is going to be take five, trying to explain the frame world, because it's too complex for my simple little brain. So we have our Corvettes here, and you can see the size difference of this thing. It is utterly insane and it's just sheer scale and this is its starting size it's going to get so so much bigger so on rescue we already have access to five different district types as the game progresses we're going to get other district types like the research one and the unity one now i've said that though i think the unity one is likely going to be replaced by a bio a bio trophy centric one so I'm really hoping that's the case, because otherwise I don't know how I'm going to have enough jobs for all of our bio trophies. The bio trophies will increase our complex drone output by 5%, so that's all well and good. Now, to increase the size of rescue, what we need to do is either spend alloys to simply increase the size of it, or influence, or more importantly, harvest asteroids. Every time we do this, it increases the size of rescue by 1%. And also increases how many replicator jobs we have by 0.2. So once you have enough of them, then you get a brand new replicator job, which will really start to add up. I think I had like 15 by the end of my hour and a half run earlier. So yeah, that's really important. We want as many of those as fast as possible so we can really scale our population. We are going to need so many robots just to keep maintenance on this thing going because... Yeah, lots of biotrophies. Lots of amenities needed. So our goal then really is just to focus mostly on tech. Things like orbital habitat tech also makes the fabricate station module cheaper, which is obviously something we really want. The Arcology Project. Sanctuary Arcology Project decision for rogues. Okay, so we want the Arcology Project um, ascension perk then, which is interesting for our machine empire. Okay, so that's what we want. So we want this, and we want Voidborn. I think it said Machine Worlds also give us something as well. So I'm going to be going for all those, so I want to see what these are like. So I want Machine Worlds, I want the Arcology Project, and I want Voidborn. So there's three of our Ascension perks already done. This is going to be a really weird run. I'm probably going to focus on a lot of the lower tier mega structures, things like the Stellar Particle Accelerator. I would like to go down a physics build this time rather than engineering because I love those really basic mega structures that just give you one type of research. Is physics a good option? I really do feel like this won't be a particularly powerful empire because I'm playing it in a weird way, but I think it's going to be just so much fun. So with that, we begin. What we really want is systems with lots and lots of asteroids so that we can do that harvesting Situation as fast as possible just to give us loads and loads of extra replicators. Although, the planetary outposts will be good as well, also giving us more replicators and other bonuses. What are the other bonuses of the planetary outpost? Cost scales with ship build cost, which is interesting. So, replicator jobs, mechanical pop assembly speed reduction by... T oh, okay. So, it fights a lot of the other effects. Extra housing, purge speed, planetary build speed's increased, which is really good because we're going to have to build so many... everything. 
So we do want the planetary outposts, although they do increase the planetary size from planets. I assume it's just affecting our one colony then. I didn't actually notice that last time, so that's something we need to bear in mind. Maybe it's not good to have loads of those. I do think the asteroid mining is probably the thing we're going to focus on the most. Ship augmentations completed. Since it will increase our empire size as well. Okay then, so, into the future we go when more things have happened. So I'm going really silly here. I'm going with expansion. I was just talking about how the planetary outposts maybe aren't the best idea to have just loads and loads of them. But I don't really care. That's what we're going down the route of. Plus, I'm going down expansion to make that even more intense because our planetary outposts are now plus 10% resources and will be 20% cheaper. But also something I didn't notice was this. Any additional pops for new colonies are instead added to our frame world whenever a planetary outpost is built on a new world, with or without this tradition. So our outposts will also give us extra populations. I didn't know that was a thing, so I'm really happy to see that. So building our first outpost now. A care bot pop has arrived on rescue due to our newly constructed planetary outpost. So there's the outpost. And once we have two of them, we will get a new replicator. So that's fantastic. So you're really hoping, though, I find an asteroid-heavy system soon? Like that. There we go. All of those asteroids can be harvested. That's the type of system we really want to find. Just loads and loads of those, so we can get loads and loads of more replicator jobs, and just scale massively that way. It's going to be worrying, because we are going to have so many biotrophies... We just need so many machines to keep things running. It's going to be difficult, so really want to focus on anything to get more robots. That asteroid harvest is about to finish, which means we can actually see the increase in size in our home world. So it's about to happen now. Yep, there we go. This little section was just added. So every time we do that, we're going to... You know what, I might as well sell the excess ones of those, thank you. Every time we do that, it also adds up, and eventually we're going to have more replicators, so all of the asteroids will be devoured. Technological end. The ghost ship. Technological Well, it's not going to do anything, so we're just going to take the system and build an outpost. Because the Asteroid Harvest cost scales with clear blocker cost, I've decided to go with Domination instead because that starts off with a minus 33%. Just makes getting all these Asteroids a lot easier. And this system is already out of Asteroids. That was very quick. We need more implements. Which thankfully Domination also gives us. Anomalous surface variable detected. Ooh, shiny. Big shiny. Construction. We've just got the tech to upgrade our research complexes, which is also the tech to build the research district. So this is two housing and four of our calculator jobs at the cost of five energy and one gas per month. Really not too bad. We can get a lot of those. And remember, every time we get a new biotrophy, we increase our complex drone output by 1%. Doesn't sound like much, but again, we're going to have hundreds Executing of them. Evasion. Higher resolution asteroid surveys. Asteroid harvesting cost minus 10%. That's great because we are actually expanding very slowly at the moment because most of our influence is going to just more and more of the asteroid harvests. Wow, that has already really expanded. That's growing quick. So rescue now is a size 37 world. Currently, we're only producing gas from our refinery district, but as we get more tech, it will produce all of the rare resources we need, which is lovely. At least the base three. I think for now, probably best to get more of our robots over here. Wow, plus 22 per month now. We have nine replicators. I want more. Rescue is now size 41. We have 11 replicators, giving us plus 30 growth per month. It sounds like an absurd amount, but bear in mind that this is with just one world. So that's all we're getting total. If you were playing a normal machine empire by now, you'd probably have that or more, just based on 
all the different worlds worth of growth. Now, thankfully, I have just found a system with loads of asteroids, so that's going to increase drastically in a second. We're finding our first neighbour, and we've got our new Civic. I've gone with Memorialist, just because it, I think it fits the Empire theme. We're looking back at the dead and thinking, hmm, maybe we shouldn't let that happen again. It also increases stability on the world and gives us some chroniclers. It, it's nice. Don't know if I'm going to keep it forever, but it, I, again, if it's the theme, which I like. Oh, do they all do that? Little animation. It's pretty cute. Whoa. Yep, the colony cost is getting a bit big now. Yeah, I wonder why they've one special. Wow, that's giving me loads of research. I wonder what makes each world give unique things. So this was a relic world that's giving all that tech. I guess it depends on what's on the world. Or, I mean, yeah, this one's giving me some Zro because it's got the colony there. Oh, the animation's coming from the science ship hiding inside. <laughs> okay. I'm just a dum-dum. Is anyone shocked? No, didn't think so. Only in battle can the true metal of any sentient organism be measured. Have a theme. Advanced strike craft, that's what I was waiting for. The fleets are pretty much ready for war now. Fleet upgrades applied. So I suppose I should make a claim which is out of the way. That way they're not going to give up straight away. Yeah, I want this world. It has a world there and a ruined particle accelerator, both of which I want. This way we can actually go Systems to war with a reason. Complete. Let's get a fleet in position. No need for any ground forces. We're just going to bombard their worlds and save their populations. They're currently at war, which is a perfect time for us. It means their fleets are currently preoccupied elsewhere. And our fleets can just sneak in and take anything we want. Hmm. Where's their home world? Do any of these worlds have many pops on, or am I going to have to go all the way to the home world? Because if it looks a thing, it's going to be all the way to the home world. You know, getting an art piece is really good when you have only one world. There we are. So that monument is plus 15% amenities, which is really good on this world. Need more stability. Also need more build speed still. So we are building things fairly quickly now. Um, this keeps going down. This now on only 152 days, for instance, for this one. But that still needs to be faster. Which basically just means... More asteroids are needed, as always. With each asteroid, we get an extra, ahem, we get an extra station module, which increases build speed by two percent. We just need loads of them. Whoa. Yep, the frame world is looking more and more crazy every day. Okay, I need to sell more stuff than I expected. That's fine for this big one-off trade. There we are. Sanctuary Arcology Project. That takes a long time, doesn't it? But it will replace organic sanctuary districts with a smaller number of high-density organic sanctuaries. Interesting. Well, that's what I want to do. Since I have grabbed the Arcology Project, I don't even know if that's really worth it, but it's going to be fun. And that's kind of the whole point of this empire, honestly. It's just a really fun empire so far. It's been... Really weird playing like this. Very different to the usual. And we need more energy still. Might just wait it out then. Okay, and the day we can declare war, of course. We have. Go straight for the home world. Take it. I think their option is just going to be to try and humiliate me, so I don't really care too much about what they do. If they take systems, etc., it's not really going to actually affect us, since they haven't made any claim. Oh, no, they did make claim on... Ah, oh, the one system I actually care about. Never mind. Well, 
We do have a secondary fleet built up now as well. And now, finally, we can also start building the particle accelerators, which is something I really, really want. Since normally I like building loads of these, the macro engineering sites, but this time I'm just going to try and build as many of these as possible. These will give us physics research, we'll have events to give us stored physics research, and we'll increase our shields by 2% for each one built. I want to build lots. Following a lengthy period of reorganization, the new organic need for filament facilities on rescue are now operational. The organics in our care will notice no disturbance, their lives left undisrupted, but enriched by the improved systems. Areas previously housing maintenance systems can now be repurposed to house an even larger population, or for other purposes entirely. There we are, the high density sanctuary districts. Yes, yeah, so that's just really cutting down on, um, Empire size, isn't it, more than anything else? Gonna need more of those, actually, so... That's the next thing to build. So he paid some privateers, not quite sure where they are, though. Ooh, what's happened there? Interesting. How did you split? That wasn't the privateers, was it? Well, let's see how their home world's doing. We are almost completely done with their first world. We now have... Well, a load of them. That's fantastic. All that lovely extra unity and lovely extra complex drone output. We need more minerals. We really need a Colossus, just so we can go on all-out wars later on. Construction online. New technology. So it took their world, the populations were instantly moved over, and then we instantly build an outpost. It's actually kind of annoying because a lot of our Empire Sprawl now is coming from our single colony because of these scaling really horribly against us. On the upside though, I have just got Machine Worlds to test out the next one of the weird Ascension perks, which allows us to do the upgrade drone habitation, which is basically the same as when we upgraded our uh, organic sanctuaries. It's just going to make our Nexus districts a lot more powerful. Now actually, I probably should move over here. There's... Ooh, wonder who's going to win. By the looks of things, the evil gecko is going to win this, and that's actually pretty good for us, because then we can go all out war and take over everything. We have a machine empire over here, which we're going to mostly ignore. Yeah, I guess just expand for now. Or, we could just wait around here and then vassalize this empire, and then we could just absorb it later. That's probably the best thing to do. Yeah, let the geckos take over there, then we can attack them all at once. Keep our fleets here ready, we'll vassalize this empire, and then take it over. Oh, though we do have you just sitting here right now. So let's take that world first then. So there'll be 32 more bio trophies. We now have enough unemployed machines that this is now active. Expand maintenance protocols. So with this, every unemployed pop after the fifth will become a frame maintenance drone. These produce a tiny little bit of energy, basically just paying for themselves, whilst also increasing resources from all other jobs. I also think their own jobs, I guess? I think so. Either way, it doesn't really matter too much. Whilst also increasing the upkeep from those jobs. That is still a massive net positive, and this way we don't get overwhelmed if we get too many populations. We are building machines so insanely quickly right now, it's good that we have this overflow. So they just make everything else a little bit more efficient. It's lovely to have them. They also, though, slow down the production of your normal machines. So eventually, these will overwhelm your replicators, and you just can't build any more machines. Which is fine, really. It's going to take a long time to get all of those. And then I guess you'll just put the replicators into the frame maintenance drone jobs. It's a really cool system, in my opinion. Now, need some more of these right now. Thank you.
revamped heavy industry comes online. Foundries and factories on rescue are abuzz with activity following the completion of our industrial renovation project. Modern industrial methods allow for a greater level of productivity, condensing equipment which once occupied huge regions of rescue into compact and efficient hub stations. The space saved by this redesign can now be used for other station modules, or simply even more factories. Which is kind of what we want since I am now building a lot of mega structures. But first, yeah, security district first, because that's getting a bit out of hand. In fact, I'm just going to build two of them to get out of the way. I need more minerals, I'm going to need a lot more minerals. Okay, once then once all that's done, then I'm just going to just spam the advanced industrial districts. We have a lot of advanced stuff now. Still plenty of space for the bio trophies, fantastic. So the bots are being slowed down a little bit now. Yeah, minus ten by the frame maintenance drones, but we're just producing them so fast. I don't know what it is about this particular mega structure, but I think it's my favorite. It's just everything about it, I really like how it looks. It's simple, it's nice. And it just seems alive, I guess. Which is always good. Well, that took way longer than expected, but we now have our first vassal, the Empire, so the next choice is either the Machines or the Union. With the Machines, it would be nice because all those populations would just be our regular populations that instantly get to work. Ooh, that's got a lot of asteroids. However, are you even weak enough for me to... Okay, yeah, you've got equivalent fleet power, but, but our economy is ridiculous, so we can beat you there. You're definitely weaker. Uh, so what I'm going to do is... Go after you. Confirm. I could do both, right? Yeah. It's the offering where you can't be at war. But you can still go to war for it. Outside of that, right? I think so. Okay, try and defend there. You go through there. That should be enough, I think. Okay. Well, let's find out. Let's go after this one first. We will cure their ignorance. And then can we also go to war with you? Oh, that's actually kind of bad. Okay, uh, let's not do that. Just because those two combined will beat me. So, take out that. Keep on building everything up. Attack them later. Unless they just want to be my friends. Would you ever accept this peacefully? No, probably not even with the distance thing removed. Could I get you into a federation? Potentially, once we can get closer. I might consider that, actually, if a federation with the other machine intelligence wouldn't be terrible, but that does mean the next one will have to be diplomacy, which isn't really what I want. Not too sure. Definitely a lot weaker than in the previous run because of some of the weird choices I've made, but we're getting there slowly. Got loads and loads of the stellar uh, particle accelerators. We've almost got 3,000 alloys per month, and yeah, it's all going well. Just... Nothing super, super powerful. I am, however, about to finish this. Expand station infrastructure, which I believe gives me a percentage increase to our districts, which... I don't know if it's going to be physically visible, but I'm hoping so, because that would be really cool. Meanwhile, I'm finally building gateways. Certainly took long enough. They do cost influence, so now that we're finally not expanding constantly, we can get that done. Following a lengthy period of construction, new core transport infrastructure corridors have been completed between the major sections of rescue. Improved structural integrity and interconnected transport networks will allow the superstructure to support additional modules. Oh, yep, we can build a lot more. So it's not actually the size increase, it's just... Okay, that's pretty awesome. Do I have enough for this? It would be great if I did. Nope, not quite enough energy. We are constantly a little bit off everything I'm trying to do at the moment. Okay. 
desperately need more minerals. That's the first thing. Would love more energy. Kind of tempted just to say more tech. Do we have many unemployed right now? Uh, we have way too many of you because, yeah, our amenities. Only plus three stability from that. Huh, I guess as long as I'm not in negative, we're going to be at 100% regardless. So, I don't even know what to go with next, to be perfectly honest. The minerals, obviously, are needed. More security is on its way. Energy is always good. Then, pff, could just focus on tech, I suppose. Really, really go for tech. I mean, we do need to start doing some repeatables. Our shields are amazing. We've got almost plus 100% bonus shielding at the moment. But we have no extra damage. So, strike craft or kinetic weapons are probably what I'm going to go with. If I go with kinetic weapons, that makes us really good versus the Scourge. So, not the Scourge. The Unbidden. Strike craft a bit more. Uh, jack of all trades, though. Don't know. Don't know what I'm doing, really. Okay, for now we'll just say tech. Wonderfully, we managed to find some void clouds. So with that, we will have cloud lightning. This war is going about as well as you might imagine. You can follow along there. You're going to go down here. Ooh, that's actually pretty nasty, but we'll be okay. That world being siphoned off next. And I've also built two of the orchid... Well, I've built one of the orchid complexes. Another one is currently being built somewhere. It was here. I was sure of it. Okay, let me have a look. Here we are, the orchid complex. So this is going to feed the entire galaxy. Once I have every organic safely in rescue. And I'm building an another one just in case. And honestly, we're probably going to build even more than that. Because we're going to have a lot of populations eventually. Plus, I kind of just like building them because they are absolutely gorgeous. In my opinion, they are the prettiest thing in the game. I don't know why either. I just really like them. Look at that lovely food. Didn't even occur to me we could buy things from the market. Okay. New technology discovered. Bit of a housing problem there, but there was a lot of biotropies that was bought. Oh god, we're gonna need more of these. So, so much stuff. And that is the Dyson Sphere Tech, since I've gone with Galactic Wonders, which means... Where are you? I just jumped someone. Yeah. We can start putting down the Dyson Spheres. Should be down here somewhere. There it is. I know it's in size order and then alphabetical order. That's what everyone told me. And yet I still struggle. It's almost like I'm dyslexic or something. Now, of course, mega structures do scale with the size of the stars. But this one, we can build nice and quickly. Once we have some Dyson Spheres and matter decompressors down, then we can remove the mining bays and generate... Probably not the generators. That's way too much energy. Um, but we can definitely remove the mining bays and swap them for other things. What a ridiculous world. And look at it now as well. It looks insane. Gone so heavy into the strike craft again. I always end up doing this, even though I complain about the strike craft constantly. It's because I love them. The strike craft for me, probably my favourite weapon. When they work. Goodbye, Ether Dragon. Whoa, didn't realize he got so much influence. And then we get the trophy, which gives us plus 10 percent unity. And active effect is happiness, obviously that doesn't do anything for us, but still. Thank you for the extra unity, and we will have... I think one of these worlds is the Dragon Horde. There it is. Be grabbing that now as well. Oh, the integration's finished! I was really wondering what all that was about then. Empire size 4,000. <laughs> But that's only thankfully, whilst I have all these um, worlds, which are all going to become outposts. Wow, actually, yeah, that's, that's going to tank my um, empire size even after they're all removed. So we're about to get all these populations. Uh, do we have space? Yes, we do. Well, let's make sure. 184 now is our district size. 
Sure, it's not as strong as a birch world, but it's so much more gloriously chaotic. About to win this war as well, I think. Oh. Not quite yet, but soon. Yep, only two away. You go and deal with that. You're about to grab this. I guess after this, we might as well just go straight into war versus these fellas. They do have a defensive pact annoyingly, so it'll be a bit more annoying to deal with, but that's all we'll do. Just keep on moving left. Sweeping our way, controlling everything. Well, I've formed the Federation, but honestly, starting to think this might not have been the best idea. Just because going to war with other empires is now difficult with so many members of our Federation, since every time I grab a new empire, it becomes part of the Federation itself. And I can't remove this just yet, because no one wants it. On the upside, though, I don't think... You have many friends, so I think if I declare war on these two, these two small empires, I could probably grab those as well. Then all I have to do is wait it out until I can change the vote weight to diplomatic. At that point, we have full control. There's nothing they can really do against us. The problem is that is a level 3 federation. But, to be fair, it's also going to take a very long time before we can integrate everyone, so I think it's okay. And the extra research we're getting is really insane. Look at that, 170% now, and that's because partially of the plus 25% from being in this federation. I think it's best we're in the federation. We can always leave it later. Must be independent. Is that because I have... Minions in the Federation? That's interesting. Well, yeah, we can always leave it later once they've been integrated, so that's fine. <laughs> okay, that helped. By using bribery, I managed to get subjects to join redacted. So now, our protectorates are no longer part of the Federation. We can leave the Federation whenever we wish, if the other machines start getting really annoying with us. That's fantastic, just makes everything a lot easier now. Only two of us. So with the war, if I send that to majority, without it being diplomatic, would I still be able to declare war will well, whenever I wish? I don't know. Well, that really hurt our cohesion for a while, but definitely worth it. What we really need now is, honestly, more machines. Now, thankfully, at this point, a lot of our bigger megastructures are now all being sorted out. We even have a Penrose Sphere over here, which is now producing energy. I'm using it just for energy, and that's going to be increasing. Our Dyson Spheres are all coming online now. But we just need more machines for pretty much everything. As you can see, we have spare jobs now, and although we are creating more than one pop per month, since we need 465 per month, but we're making 510 points per month, we still need a lot more. And we're about to get a load more Biotrophies as well, because it's only six years until we can start integrating this, and it's a massive empire with a lot of population. Engaging it's difficult fleets. to care for this many pops. So we won the war, unsurprisingly. But I then noticed something else. Whilst I was moving over to, you know, have our fleets in position so that the merchants would soon be under our care as well. The cats are here. Not only the cats are here. They are terrifying. It's a special type of fallen empire which constantly gets more tech. This fallen empire has been focusing its research efforts on a single task for several millennia. Its founding organic species, the cats in themselves, have long since been relegated to lives of unending luxury, while automatons and mighty megastructures work tirelessly to try and find the so-called ultimate answer, which according to their deranged director, would reportedly grant access to godhood. And every five years they get one of each repeatable, making them now just insanely high-tech, but yeah, they also have an O-class brain. Obviously, I want all of this, but I can't imagine I'm anywhere near strong enough to fight them. 
Maybe once I get some of the planet craft operational or something, or loads of attacker moons, or decent battleships? Not too sure. Maybe if they have really low hull points I'll be okay, because the cloud lightning? I don't really know, but for now, we're just focusing on making more protectorates. Glory to Convergence. Integrated Matter Decompressor, Integrated Penrosphere, Upgrade Data Processing Facilities. Wow. I love this origin so freaking much. Begins construction of a multi-stage megastructure which once completed will replace the frame world's astro mining bays with a smaller number of significantly more powerful matter decompression matter decompression subnodes. Begins the construction da -da 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 -da. so generator districts into Penrose process subnodes. On megastructure completion, adds to, it also increases energy from tech drones, but makes them cost minerals. And this one, which costs an absolute fortune, gives plus 25% to the calculator output. Okay, so I definitely want that. Very interesting indeed. Okay, so... I guess I'll be saving up alloys for a while. I was building up um, a, a, an extra fleet, but I could stop them. No, I still want the extra fleet because I, I want to build up to attack the uh, the Katzen before the end of this playthrough. What a crazy world we live in. Wow, are we going to completely encase this black hole? I'm hoping so. That'd be cool. Our first moon is active. So with the moon, I've ended up going with lots of cloud lightning, lots of focused arc emitters and everything else. We're going with artillery mode, and that's pretty much the moon. Station under attack. I guess I'll bring that down as well, since we're going to go to war with everything else later. Now normally, one of the biggest weaknesses with cloud lightning is its really limited range for a large weapon. However, the attack moons don't care about that. Even if they are focusing on the wrong target right now. But still. That's all because of this. Ship weapon damage plus 20%. Range plus 300%. The moons are going to be so deadly if they get to attack through a whole system. As long as they're not ambushed, these are going to hurt so much. Oh my god. The cats are ridiculous. I don't know how I meant to take these systems without just using a Dyson beam or something. But then that's more just destroying the system. Which isn't really what our empire is all about. Maybe Planetcraft might be able to get the job done. But even then, I doubt it. This is just insane. So, we destroyed a rogue attack moon. We can either repair it, or... Just scrap it. Honestly, I'm thinking just scrapping it, because that's... Yeah, it's going to help out all the different building progresses. We've got... Really annoyingly, I missed this, but our moon just took out the other moon. It wasn't even intentional, but our lovely... 420 moon. Managed to defeat this one. Honestly, it wouldn't have been that much of a fight as has all the research upgrades. That one didn't. I'm going to scrap it because that's a lot of alloys which are going to be really useful. Since now, we have gigastructural engineering. Sorry, gigastructural constructs finished. Construction works have concluded on the new high bandwidth computation complex on rescue. Vast banks of supercomputers are now available to tackle the toughest scientific queries that we have yet devised, and promise a vast improvement in general research throughput. Integration of these systems into the core station functions is ongoing, but the additional heat management load is not expected to cause significant disruption.
Oh. I did not notice that. This megastructure allows for much higher densities of biotrophies than normal planets. This effect offsets the extreme stacking of complex drone outputs when they reach high numbers. Additional biotrophies are always beneficial, but the efficiency of each new pop decreases beyond 50. Okay. So it's still a benefit, just less insane than I originally thought. To be fair, we're still getting so many, it's still going to be a huge thing. Pre-sapiens uplifted. There we are, a lovely chunk of influence when it was needed the most. So I've just put all my forces here just to see how strong we are. I think we could potentially attack the Xenophile Fallen Empire soon. Though... They too have asteroid artillery, they have moons themselves. It's just so difficult to attack the fallen empires in this mod. How expensive is this going to be on an O class? Well, that'll give so much extra research when it's finished. Time to start building the brains. I'm also now researching the tech to finally bring our behemoth planet graph, the one we found a ruin of, to life as well. We have built the Penrosphere just underneath Glorious Rescue. I thought that was going to do something straight away, though. I thought it was changing the jobs we were getting. Unless I need to also finish it off, I suppose. Well, off to work we go. The matter decompressor is also being built now. So we have both the Penrosphere and that. We are now repairing our world as well. So soon we're going to have our planet craft so planet craft all of the moons and everything else i think i will then try to attack the fallen empire over here i think that's the next thing to do at the moment it looks like maybe i might be able to get these fellows to join us willingly which would be so much easier the penrose sphere is complete so that's changed our jobs to oh no it's still just the tech drone jobs that is producing more now also gives us a lot of free districts. Honestly, right now we just need more and more alloys. I am trying to build some more mega structures, but they're costing loads of influence, which is really slowing us down. And look at how expensive this is. Just the very first stage, 135,000 alloys. Though this brain will be glorious. The planet craft is ready. Our scanners cannot make any sense of this strange vehicle. Really? I'm not allowed to actually know what's on the planet craft? Whoa. Well, that's not the best. Is that really the best missiles I have? How did I manage to do that? Well, either way. I don't know if this will apply to the one we just repaired. I think the one we just repaired may just be its own unique thing. Wow. And then just pure shields, because it already has loads of armor built in, I suppose. Yeah, we want the hangers anyway. Looks like I can't really customize it either way, other than just a few little things. Will that now upgrade? Okay, so it is that one then. Okay, upgrade yourself and then go over here. Then I may attack the Fallen Empire, I think. Oh wow, the game almost crashed them. It just froze up for a good minute. Oh god, this is gonna look so bad for our Empire size until all these are fully devoured. 
Um. So, gonna pause for a sec. Empire size, eleven thousand. Well, that's gonna be a lot of population suddenly arriving here. Now, thankfully, they don't actually use up housing as long as they have the biotrophy job available. So, that's good at least. The next stage of the brain is also now being produced, which is good because we're going to need the um, percentage. <laughs> 29 months. Oh, it's still pretty bad though because we're going to have all of these colonies become outposts and there's nothing I can do about it. Well, what I could do afterwards is remove these worlds. That's probably what I'm going to have to do. Uh, hopefully that won't make them too angry at me. Just dismissive. Good. Now we have only the one extra colony, and our empire size has mostly gone back to normal. We can go ahead and reactivate all of this, which is really helpful. Okay, everyone's here. We have the planet craft, we have our tiny little moons, we have our tiny, tiny little transports. I don't know if we're going to win this, but we definitely want the tech from them at the very least. So that's fine. So declare war to conquer the ancients. Come on. Please accept the war. Thank you. Engaging hostile station. Now, the asteroid artillery is honestly terrifying. It has so many weapons. Ooh, we just obliterated their 300,000 fleet. Not really too surprising since we have millions of fleet power here with our own worlds and everything. Okay, there we are. So, which way do we go? Do we go through the Dyson Sphere system or do we go through this system here? Probably through here, because that way we can also bombard the preserve and steal all of their pops. So what are they actually after with us? Just to, humi just to humiliate us. So we're not actually going to lose anything, even if we lose the war, outside of our fleets. Once again, please all stick together. You should all really follow the slowest, which I think will probably be the moons? No, will be the world. Of course it will. Okay. So, influence is right now being the thing holding us back the most. Like, I really want our super weapon, but the problem is that costs loads of influence. And a lot of the mega structures cost influence as well, including, of course, the behemoth worlds themselves. So, that's kind of annoying. Ooh, they've all kind of ran away from their home system. That's good. So, all they have is the single attack moon and, of course, the asteroid artillery. But that's fine. 104 pops, 54 and 36. And we can start moving it in our science vessel as well, so we can start getting that lovely, lovely tech. Oh, we've got one over there. Oh, of course, because we stole all the science vessels from the person we integrated. Beautiful. New technology discovered. With that moon at the front, it looks like it's trying to be the... Whoa. Fleet. The really big system craft. Wish I could tell it to focus on the moon. Because that moon fires. Yep. Don't know what that moon does hit. It wasn't one of our moons, thankfully, but that shot was deadly. Okay, there goes their moon. I was hoping to have a Rex moon. Oh! Our main attack hit their moon. And that was it. All the defense is gone here. We, we can just sit here and we have a... There is a 6,000 fleet standing by already. How strong are these worlds? Probably, oh, utterly ridiculous. Okay, so we're gonna be here bombarding for a while, that's fine. So it's weird sending in a moon to bombard a world. Jumping in ground reinforcements, because honestly it's taking way too long. I'm building loads of these at the moment because it's one of the few mega structures that requires absolutely no influence, but I still need. 
There are loads of megastructures which don't require influence, but none which I actually need at the moment. Our minerals are looking a bit dire since I am now making the larger forges, which take loads of minerals. There we go. Lots of our mega warforms landing. That shouldn't take too long. And do we want any of the other systems? We could take their Dyson Sphere. It also has some asteroids, which is always good. Yeah, that's just all of their, um, ooh, one of those defenses, I was going to say. Uh, you know what? Sure. While I'm waiting around, it does cost a lot, but it's going to be a while until we attack the cats and fallen empire anyway. At least until our two new behemoth worlds are made. So, we'll, so I have three worlds and loads of moons. Oh, I thought it was a lot stronger. I wonder how expensive this is going to be. Come on, 10 more days. The game is starting to really slow down now, but it's fine. Oh, 170,000. Thankfully, we're almost there, but still. So next one, then, is the processor. This will give us 3,000 of these research. It's really the last stage, which is the important one, since it will also give us a research speed bonus. And I'm not quite sure how much, but this is the largest type of brain you can make. New technology discovered. So that actually begs the question, with the Katzen, what's more valuable to us? This thing. Oh, it's... Plus 40% research speed. Oof, that is insanely good, but it's protected by all of these asteroid artilleries, which are going to be absolutely brutal. Or is their home system more valuable to us? A bit less protected, for a start. And this has three... Science Nexus, so yeah, that would be more, wouldn't it? Well, it's 45%, I should say. And of course, that has all the pops as well, which you want. So I guess this is probably the system we're mostly after. I'm assuming they're living on the brain. Because if they're not, when I take... Wait, when I take their home system, won't they just lose? Because that's all they have, all their population's there. That's interesting. I just realised their station is 9.5 million fleet power. Yeah, we're not going to be able to just grab that. So I'm really hoping after we take the home system, they just fall. Just fall. They fall over. They go bye-bye. Doesn't look like there's any other colonies, and I don't know if that counts as a colony. Okay, we'll have enough influence. I'm not going to make the claim, though, until we're already there. We already have one other planet craft on the way. Hopefully the other one will be ready soon. So the storm has dissipated, and I've realised something pretty nasty. Every system with lots of asteroids, of course, has lots and lots of asteroid artillery, which have been upgraded massively, so much so it's not even showing their true fleet power. So, the question is, how do we go about attacking the enemy? I can't see this system because of the nebula, but I can only assume because of, well, if you look at it, there's going to be loads of asteroids here. I don't think there's asteroids here, so what we could do is jump and then move in. But that means our really strong craft, the planetary behemoths, will be at 50% damage. So maybe it's going to be worth just going in here and hoping there's not too many and just mowing down the defences so that as long as the planetary behemoths still exist, we can then move through. I'll probably lose some moons in the process. I think that might be the call, honestly, because I think jumping will just it'll put us at too much of a disadvantage versus the fleets. I think that's the call. Maybe. Now, we are going to go to war very soon, though. In only two months, we're going to level up our federation, which means I can then take complete control over our war efforts, which means we can finally actually attack the enemy. I was going to just leave the federation, but I like the bonuses it gives us, so we're staying for now. There we go. Okay, so we're now level three. Which even further gives us more um, stuff. So we're going straight to medium. Which they'll accept willingly. Huh. Antique Titans. Ooh. Sorry, just random shiny thing I've not seen before. That's cool. Anyway. So from there we go back into here. So we go to vote white diplomatic. I can just wait a few seconds or bribe them. I'll just bribe them. 
Then after that, I'll change war to majority. Which I think I've already done. Yep, so once it's, so once it's diplomatic, that basically means everything is under my control. It begins. We go to war on ignorance. Oh, how bad is this going to be? Discovered. Oh, that is so much worse than I expected. Oh, we are going to lose so much. Okay, well, I have made a major mistake straight away. Fleet lost. Please focus fire. Moons, uh, planet craft, please just... Lost. All those battleships went down in seconds. Okay, we are destroying them, though. Yeah, the moons main weapon and the behemoths are going to do so much damage, but I'm going to lose so many moons to this. God, that is dreadful. I did not expect there to be that many. I was, I was expecting maybe five or six. I knew there's going to be lots, but I didn't think... Well, there's their moons. Yeah, our planet craft is going to tear them apart. Jeez. The planet craft is so strong, but I lost all of my moons. No, three of the moons survived. Okay, incoming to the fleet. Oh, the moons and the planet craft with the um, cloud lightning and everything are so brutal. Love that to bits. Let's see if we can just go like this. So ignoring everything else right now. I should have enough ground force. I think I've got almost 70k. Yeah, I'm, in fact, now I have over 70k for, um, ground force. Station. The mega war forms are so powerful, and, and, and we can make them so quickly because of the frame world's stuff. Was it still the right call not to jump? I mean, the planet craft are at full capacity because of it, and they are doing the bulk of the work. I don't know. I don't know if what I was doing then is correct or wrong. Also, I need more um, storage. New technology discovered. Come on, hurry up. Okay, that I do want to continue. I am building two more planet craft. That's where all of our influence went. Although now we have enough influence to do this. Galactic reforms. And I want to, of course, be the custodian. This will give me loads of influence moving forwards. Actually, we're currently in center. Oh, no. Okay, so I'm going to emergency measure and get that started as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Oh, my moons, my beautiful moons. Okay, we're here. Okay, let's have a look and see. What's the ground force? Oh, look, it still has this next to it. I didn't expect that. Huh. Okay, so the actual worlds, though. 47,000! What? Oh, my god. Okay, we're gonna be here for a while, but um, the all they want to do is humiliate us, so it doesn't matter if their fleets are doing anything to us. I guess just start stealing their pops and hope we ruin the worlds while we're waiting. And take out one of the worlds, at least, so that's good. One, two, three, four, five worlds. All that strength. Well, I am making some more ground forces in the background, but it's still going to be a while. Yeesh. Cats and crazy things. The brain central processes are finished. Now to build the quantum calculators, bringing it to 10,000 of each research. At the cost of four influence per month. Only one left after this. Then we have the fully operational brain. Ah, wasn't paying attention, did not see the last pop-up. When did that happen? Okay, well, the unbidden here. Hmm, that's very annoying because you are one of the few empires without a gateway. Kind of wish you were close to my territory, honestly. How many of the planet craft are needed to keep the system safe? I don't... No, um, I think one of the planet craft is probably enough at this point, because we've destroyed almost all the enemy's fleet, so the other two planet craft, please move out. 
I think you'll be okay versus the Unbidden. Now, you are mostly armor, which is really bad New versus the Unbidden. Discovered. But you do have weapons which are good against them. I wish you were kinetic now. Kinetic weapons would be better here, but the stuff which goes through shields, obviously, is also really good versus the Unbidden. I think we're actually more decked out versus the Contingency, but you know what? Sure, Unbidden's fine. As long as it's not the Scourge, that's fine. Plus, we are very, very strong. I need more ground for I need more everything. I'm only just about going to beat this first planet. That is insane. Oh, I really hope we don't have to go to war again. I need more forces down here just to bombard. I could do that. I mean, I have some fleets. I mean, if the enemy are there anyway, let's move them. Let's move our fleets here so we can then decide what to do. New technology discovered. Engaging hostile fleets. That's a long to start firing than I expected. I mean, that was pretty. That's annoying. Okay, looks like the planet craft are taking damage, but yeah, they're going to be fine. The planet craft will be fine dealing with the um, unbidden. Good. I mean, they really should be, honestly. We're really outscaling a normal endgame crisis. Now, annoyingly, we're not going to win this war, which is so irritating. I could make a claim here and try and go for it, but with 9 mil, I just can't see it happening. Uh, on the upside, for next time, at least two of the worlds won't really have an army. We've stole most of their pops, honestly, so everything's going to be a bit more broken. So in 10 years' time, when the peace treaty fades, we'll come back and we'll easily take out the cats. And... At least we got loads of their pops, eh? Less than 100 days, and annoyingly, there's only two worlds left. Oh. I've managed to completely make one barren. How did I do that? I thought this couldn't take the last few pops. Well, I have no idea how I've done that, but apparently I wiped out a world. By accident. That's a new one. New technology discovered. So there's their 8 mil fleet. Don't think this is really going to help us anyway, is it? Not really. How about you? Yep, plus 20% weapon damage, that's fine. We do now have more planet craft on the way, so just these two isn't everything. Is it just me, or did their shields just kind of pop up out of nowhere then on, on the planet craft themselves? Yeah, planet craft are a bit too strong for this, aren't they? Suddenly kind of wish I let the block had spawn. I think I would have been maybe okay. Though saying that with the system craft. You know what? I think I would have lost still versus the blockers, to be completely honest. But I wasn't really prepping for them, to be fair to myself. But still, you know, I don't think you've got to go together. I think you can split up and start taking out all these things yourself. Honestly. Then there are more on the way. And I'm building a gateway right here. So as soon as we can go back to war with these fellows, we can just obliterate them. 74. That's when we go to war again. I'm constructing our doomsday weapon. The reason is, after I've constructed this, the next time I go to war, I can go for total war, which means I can just take everything similar to the Colossus. That way we don't have to take over the alignment over here and then wait for integration after 10 years. And then that will take probably like another 10 years after that elapses. So instead, we're just going for total and complete warfare. Just need to learn where these gateways go. That's the only problem. Oh, only one gateway, actually. That's going to make things a lot easier for us. As soon as we can figure out where that goes. Could be that one there. Should be easy. Plus, our ally is almost as strong as they are. We have plenty of fleets, so... Take out the Fallen Empire. Take out the other Fallen Empire. Completely. You. I'm a little bit upset. I accidentally took out the portal. I didn't realise it was about to become vulnerable. I thought this one over here was an anchor. Now looking at it, nope, it's definitely not. I was going to do what I normally try and do with these and keep it safe, essentially permanently keeping the portal here. 
in order to research it. After all, we don't know if um, this type of empire, which has got mad and trying to protect everything into one, would consider that life viable to survive. Maybe it would have. I mean, it's still life, just not life as we normally know it. Oh, well. The Unbidden are about to be finished off anyway. All of our worlds are making sure of that. Attention, denizens of the galaxy. The ultimate answer has been found. It thus falls to me to ensure the squabbling of the galaxy does not interfere with the fulfillment of my ambitions. Either submit or stay out of my affairs until I am through. And then I shall finally be free forever. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Okay, so yeah, they're making the Ascension Engine. Should this be allowed to be completed, our scientists have concluded that while not drastic enough to outright end the galaxy, the subspace feedback caused by the breach of the... Oh my god, that is horrendous. We have 25 years. So they've also just awoken. There's like two mil fleet. I am so glad we weakened them earlier. Do you still count? Oh, I still can't go to war with you just yet. But I will. This is an actually decent final fight for us. I love this. Glory to the Convergence. Grand Defender. Okay, they've just brought online a planet graft. Well, that's not gonna do much against ours, but still. Hopefully. I have no idea what their upgrades like. We also have attack moons and everything. Now the issue is, because they are a awakened empire, I think they will be able to take our territory as they attack us. So what I need to do is have at least one of the moons over here, and at least one over- Basically, I just need a- not a moon, a planet craft just sitting here, so that we don't end up losing all our territory. We need to, just, we need to just, just destroy their fleets as soon as possible, if I can use my words. The Xenophiles have also awoken to become the Guardians of the Galaxy. We don't need them. Okay, so it's going to be End Threat Containment. Which means we're going to be able to grab everything as we go. But also, they can do the same to us this time. We will cure their ignorance. So they're currently sitting here, their world, but there's lots and lots of these asteroids here, so I'm not going to attack them here. I'm going to try and force them to go back to the home system. Engaging hostile station. Just like before, just move through here. Oh, we just destroyed something big. Yep, some attack moons got destroyed, which we can now repair onto our side. Lovely. Ooh, same with the artillery. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm doing all of these, then. Turn this into a nice bastion on our side. Okay, you're there. You're there. I think you can probably take out this... Yeah, that station easily. Same with you. Uh, it's a little bit stronger. You'll sit there because you only just jumped. You're weak right now. Everyone, please stick together. Construction ship taking fire. Not going to fight you there under any circumstance. Ooh, goodbye, Moon. So, they have got some of their garrison back, but nowhere near the level of before, is what we're seeing here. Where's our defender? It's over there now. Oh, okay, that's annoying. But if I'm correct, this is all they have in terms of their actual holdings. Could I take this? I don't think I can. There's just too many of these asteroids. Then a 11 million fleet station in the middle. I want to take it, but I don't know if I can. 
could try and ambush their world and hope our world's better, but I honestly don't know if that would work out well for us. And you're currently damaged. Could attack with both of them at the same time, then jump in the other worlds afterwards to finish off the job. Okay, well, what I'm going to do for now... Set all of you to start damaging these worlds. Probably should swap you from um, that orbital bombardment to another one, but that's fine just for now. Everyone's following you. We could attack this right now while it's only the artillery, but I'm not sure. If we lose all those worlds, we lose this. That's a thing. And although they are fantastically powerful, as you've seen, if they get caught out, out of position, they can be taken out surprisingly easily. We've had that happen in previous playthroughs. That's going to go down pretty quickly, I imagine. Yep. It's going to be caught out, by the way. Under attack. Wow, their their world is horrendously strong. Probably because I didn't hit it once with the main attack. Well, that was dumb. Okay, so right now we're just about to take the final world from the enemy. We're not far off. But I know for a fact they have other worlds, one here, and more importantly, they actually have a world here. I was just checking out some of the stuff here, and yep... I managed to miss that for a while, but they definitely have the laboratory over there. We should have enough ground forces to deal with that, but we need to attack it soon, I imagine. Our war exhaustion is getting higher, and this is about to finish. I don't know what happens when that finishes. I don't know if there's another phase or what, but obviously, we want that to not happen. So, I think I've got enough fleet power here to deal with that. If we can't, then we're just going to status quo and end up with this system, which is still great because our super weapon is getting very close to being finished. So if there's some time, maybe we can just obliterate the system. That's the current thinking. Oh, okay, one of the planet craft was destroyed. That's because it went all by itself, which is very silly of it. Over here, we're about to finish this off. Once we finish that off, we get access to the gateway. We've just got another planet craft which I can move next to the gate now. We have ground forces being created, so we'll definitely have enough to deal with that final world, as I think I will. And even if not, I can just keep on sending them through. I think we've got this, just about. War exhaustion is 100%. It's going to be so insanely close. That's all of them done. I think, okay, yep. Grab that, then begin bombardment. You move in now, please. I should have accessed the gateway, right? Yeah. Oh, there's good old Grand Defender somewhere here. Well, here's hoping that all of our other ships will be enough. In fact, they definitely will. What I can do is send them all back, except for one moon to stay here bombarding, which will be at max speed still. I think we'll be okay. Still, maybe. I don't know. So, it's complete, but now it takes time to charge up. And it is gorgeous. Horrifying, but gorgeous. Well, I just saw one of our planet craft go down. It turns out, good old, uh, Grand Defender's back. Oh. And warped out of existence? Okay. I'm guessing it got away. And... Conquered. Okay, with that... Mine... Okay, I now have the Ascension Engine. That's great. However, I can't help but notice it's still... Doing stuff. Also, yeah, I just finished uh, assimilating another group. So now all of this is ours.
What do I do now? How does one stop this? Engaging hostile fleet. Yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing right now. And I took everything important to them, so I made a status quo now to end the war, because then I have the system. Even if I am now apparently the one using it. Okay, lots of stuff just popped up. Finally the brain, there we go. Enemy forces have managed to successfully seize and dismantle the Ascension Engine. With the loss of the most important asset, they will no longer be able to enact his demented plan to ascend beyond our reality. Reports indicate the Director has gone missing following the Engine's capture, and his civilian, now bereft of purpose, is falling into utter disarray. Okay, yeah, no, no contingency plans. You've changed the Director's, so you're a different one now. Okay, so that's who we're at war with now. Okay. The brain, however, has suffered significant damage in the fighting and less productive. But they're now weakened heavily, just said like minus 80%. Oh yeah, much weaker. So I guess we should just take them out, I suppose. Here's the weird thing though, they could eat, they could force status quo, I don't know why they're not doing it. They could have forced status quo for a while now. Not that I'm complaining, but I am confused. Okay, then they force status quo themselves, finally. Mm -hmm. Funnily enough, they're pretty ang angry at us, but they are still an awakened empire, which means we could see a war in heaven, which would be an absolute nightmare. Oh. God, that's a lot of force. Okay, so... I need fleets up and running, please. You know what? I'll set up a normal fleet this time. And uh, let's just repair our... Planet craft. Okay, yeah, can everyone move over here? That'll be the next fight then against the other Awakened. As I start to integrate... That doesn't really matter which one, I suppose. Let's go with you, little tiny empire. Shouldn't take too long. How is that 73 months? You're tiny! Oh, thankfully, that this this one and this one will be the last two integrations. After that, it'll be total war. All the planet craft are moving over to the Arbitrators to finish those off, the Awakened Empire. Then we have the Alignment to deal with and just the small empires to consume. Then I'm done. Every organic will be within our territory or dead. One of the two. Probably should deal with those as well at some point. Yeah, this empire is pretty much done now. Sorry, Katzen. As soon as we can go to war with you again, we will, and that will take moments, because you have no fleets and only a tiny bit of territory. And I'm currently repairing my behemoth planet craft, which were lost during the war. Our brain is finished. Which one is this? This is the original one we were building, which gives us plus 40% research speed and 25,000 to each research. Not that we really need that anymore, but it is nice to have. Today has been a day of very big numbers and scary cats. So we've gone to war with the other Awakened Empire. Uh, sadly, there is a chunk of footage now missing because my microphone randomly reset its settings, so suddenly everything was just really, really horrible sounding. Well, this is going a lot faster than the cats and fight, as you can imagine. Oh, there's their last attack moon. Oh, there's my Colossus, and there goes the attack moon. No. New technology discovered. More food for all the organics of the galaxy. They weren't even sharing their food. I mean, who's the real evil here? Not me. I'm just bringing happiness to all the organics. They're welcome. I've just realised something. My goal is to have all organics that I can move into the 
frame world into the frame world. I know for a fact that in the galactic core, there is a primitive civilization. I just don't want to open up the galactic core because there's also a chance that the big scary thing is in there. Now, of course, we are also big and scary, but I don't want to have to deal with that. But I don't even know if they're organics, so by my own rules, I've got to open up the galactic core. Because I know there's at least one of the civilization. Concluded. Okay. Let's get a science vessel and rush straight for where we need to be. Which is there. I don't know how far you have to get before you find out what's in the very center, so you know what? You just run right there. Please, please, please don't be the scary thing. That's all I ask. The arbitrators have been finished off, and I've kind of forgot I'm still memorialist. Well, it's keeping 100% stability on rescue, so we'll leave it as it is. One more empire has been rescued. Let's move all our fleets over here. And then as soon as the truce is over, we'll go to war with the directors. After that, we'll go for total war with the alignment. Though this is going to be an absolute nightmare of how large the empire is. Oh, that's interesting. If you try and bombard this planet now, it actually flings the shells back at your ships. I don't care. Is that one being hit? New technology discovered. If they are hurting us, they're hurting us very little. I'm just wondering if we'll be able to get any damage through. Obviously, you're not meant to, but last time I tried this, I could actually get a little bit of damage through. Yep, there we go, a tiny bit of damage. Doubt we're going to steal any pops, though. Wow, they are so ridiculously strong. So not only do they have a very strong garrison, the main problem is it's all in these really hyper-powerful things, like the Grand Bunny there is 47,000. Generally, with defense forces, the... It's better to have one very strong unit than multiple weaker units, and that's kind of doing that to the extreme. So we're going to need lots of ground forces. But I still really, really want to conquer them, because they are organics, and we can give them a better life. Also, this is really, really expensive. New technology discovered. I just never get tired of that attack. So whilst I'm awaiting the next war, I'm just cleaning out all the hostiles of the galaxy. Actually, what I could have done now I think about it is use the super weapon, but you know what? Who needs to do that when you have loads and loads of ships? Oh, have I sent all my fleets out already? Trying to um, completely surround this empire. A wormhole goes there, there's a fleet there, there's fleets down here, just awaiting. Sure. Could you spare one of the planet craft, please? Deal with these. Ooh. Shiny things. New technology discovered. Wow, the damage on our warforms now is just insane. Once the Grand Bunny arrives, though, that's when I think it gets terrifying, but thankfully we have a lot of crown forces. Technology discovered. I'm on auto for every science, except for society, because I'm focusing on army damage. Class A star. Okay, so you... So it'll be neutral, empty space, class A, that one. Probably should have made sure we jumped out first there, but okay. Oh, did I just destroy New the structure? Technology discovered. Right. 
I thought the structure remained after you turned it off. Well, just in case. There is no structure anymore. The Grand Bunny was utterly obliterated. In fact, is continuing to utterly obliterate our war forms, but our damage is pretty good as well. And so the Grand New Bunny is removed discovered. now. Then the Royal Defenders are still doing loads of damage, but that's all that's left, and we have so, so many New reserves. Technology discovered. The machines beat the Psychers today. Come on, last New one. I hope we finish it. Discovered. I want to see if anything happens once we finish it. Successful. Wait, the planet collapsed? Through sheer firepower, our armies managed to slay the god and leader, the almighty Grand Bunny. As the creature's colossal body dropped onto the ground, every single bunny suddenly stopped moving and started to collectively emit a deafening screech audible everywhere on the planet. The Grand Bunny's body then began to shine with a blindingly bright purple light, outshining even the local star. This light rapidly grew to engulf all of the planet in cataclysmic energies, and the whole planet is now beginning to collapse in on itself as if crushed by the sheer amount of energy unleashed by the Grand, Money's, Grand Bunny's death. Is that a shrink then? Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, there it goes. So the soul of the Grand Bunny was crushed into a crystal along with the rest of the planet, and the effects are kind of insane. Hyper jump charge time minus 50%, sublight speed plus 100%, jump drive range plus 100%, and then its active effects are just a more extreme version of that with some insane speed increases. So already, look at the distance our things can jump. In the next war, that's going to be so useful against such a large empire. Oh. What? You're not all machine... You're not all machines now, are you? No, okay, so it's just your leader is a synth. I was going to say, because otherwise we'd be done, because we're just trying to save organics, and if you're not organics, we don't care. Hence why we're leaving the machine empire over here, just to its business. One more brain is now complete. This, of course, being the brain which the Katzen had. That's right, we have the intelligence now of a machine empire and a cat. Oh, that's why we're seeing the matriarchs pop up. New technology discovered. Sorry, matriarch. Yeah, sure. You're an organic. You want to join us? Of course, we'll accept. Commencing planetary invasion. Station under attack. How did that get destroyed? I don't know what has happened. It doesn't really matter. Okay, there we go. You're gone as well. Move our fleets over here. Won't be long now until we can go to war with the alignment, which will be the last battle. Oh, Corona. Um, I forgot about these guys. So there are still some organics around here, so we need our influence to grab these systems first. Thankfully, this is the last integration currently underway, so once this is done, we'll get loads more influence per month. We can grab all this nice and quickly. Okay, no, those aren't. Yeah, those thankfully are not actually primitive, so just this system then. Unless... Yeah, so there's that one. Oh, no, never mind. The Katzen homeworld is still here. Just this time without the actual Katzen on. That's odd. So I guess the Katzen evolved into the superpower we saw and... 
every other species was left behind. Okay. Well, thankfully, we have loads of ground forces, so dealing with any of those are going to be absolutely no problem. Rescue is insane now. Look at this thing. What size is it now? 420. <laughs> well, it's a very good size. Did they just awaken? Wow, they just reached space. That is... What was that timing? And unfortunately for you, uh, the easiest way for me to collect you is just to go to war with you, I'm afraid. You will cure their ignorance. At least it'll cost less, in less influence for me. And we have a moon ready right next to us, so... Engaging hostile station. Did I send the moon to the wrong system, or did I just rush ahead? Thankfully for us, we have a lot of ground forces. New technology discovered. Commencing planetary invasion. Planet conquered. Well, that was easy. Now to the disciple influence, and then we can go after this. Oh, I thought it was stronger than that. Well, apparently not. Activated the soul, giving us plus 300% sublight speed, plus 500% jump drive range, less cooldown. It basically means we can just bounce around all we want. <laughs> you can just jump the entire map. Well, that's pretty beautiful, gotta be honest. Okay, finally declare war. Total war. New technology discovered. Yeah, mom. Let we it happen. Thank you. Okay, so geez, like you, behemoth. One of the behemoths, please go there. Then the others will end up going one over here, which is where most of their squads are. I think they'll be okay to take out all that by themselves. That's a lot of small craft. They're not particularly strong craft. Do we have any other fleets? What is go- Well, about to find out what's going on here. Not quite sure. Oh! The robots uh, control that. The machine empire, that is. Then other fleets just do your thing and, I guess, take systems. Uh, you'd go like this. This'll take a while. This war will definitely take a while. New technology discovered. But hopefully all the extra sublight speed and everything won't be too bad. Engaging hostile fleet. Spaceport lost. Juggernauts versus Colossi. And by Colossi I meant to say entire planets. Engaging hostile station. New technology discovered. Engaging hostile station. Hostiles in range. range. New technology discovered. Engaging hostile station. Engaging hostile station. The ships are moving so quickly. Which is to be expected, which is weird to see a planet craft just haul so much speed. Come on, we've finished the fight. Technology climb. discovered. Whee! Yeah, they're that fast. They kind of teleport to the next system long before they reach the outside. It's weird. Not complaining, though. It's going to make this war go so much faster. So annoyingly, I can't take over this world. It won't let me land my forces here. For some reason. Okay, so it's a class O. There's no organics on there, so there's nothing wrong with doing this. Though saying that, I did accidentally kill the caravanners earlier, because I forgot they were all organics. So, less accidentally killed them, more forgot that we shouldn't kill them. And then, you know, the beam and everything. Well, the lag every month at the moment. Okay, so... Hostile, I guess, right now? 
Alignment, class O. You can't fire a class O. Well then. Why can I not fire at this? Doesn't count as that, right? Nope. Hmm. My destructive capabilities are not as good as I originally thought. Can I bombard it then and hopefully steal the last pop? Actually, no, it doesn't matter. Again, it doesn't matter. Because there's no organics here and it can't grow organics at the moment, I don't think it matters. And the reason why I can't invade it is because currently it's under the control of the machine, the AI. Yeah, planet is occupied. Annoying. Can I at least bombard it? Ooh. Wait, why do I have Armageddon? Because our allies have Armageddon and they built these ships, so until I change that, I have access to Armageddon bombardment. When were you a crisis aspirant? When did you go mental? That's not a problem. That's not a problem for us. Here's the thing. They can't, after this war, they can't get any more points towards their crisis thing, which means they're never going to be able to destroy the galaxy. They're just going to be our little researchy, angry friends. So it's time for one of the oldest glitches I can remember with the Federation fleet. If you just keep on spam building it like this and not going into the designer, the game kind of forgets there's a limit to your Federation fleet size. And you can just keep on going until you run out of resources. I've got a lot of resources since I'm gaining almost 19,000 alloys every month and I keep on capping that out. We're about to see a lot of battleships. All in a Federation fleet. This is how I should spend my time. Well, I think that's pretty much it. Outside of the world I can't interact with, I have taken every world. We're now transferring the last few populations of each. And thankfully, that world which I can't interact with doesn't have any organics on it, which means they can never grow organics again, which means they're never going to fit into my rule set of stealing every organic in the galaxy. I think I've actually done it. I want to double check to make sure I haven't missed any primitives. I don't think there's any organics over here, no. My god, I've actually achieved every organic being on one world. That is truly bizarre, but let's get to at least size 500 on our um, frame world. Then I guess I'll be calling it quits. This has been so much fun. New technology discovered. All organics in a nice, safe location forever. No idea why I'm still flying, honestly. Okay, this fusion suppressor is done. Our science has been done. New technology discovered. There we go. So now it's just a normal black hole, and let's make a Penrosphere. Discovered. I was not paying attention to that. So our Federation fleet has just hit 10 million. <laughs> I like battleships. Somewhere there's one Titan. Where is the Titan? Aha! <laughs> well then. I almost missed these primitives. So at this point, I think it's going to be a 50-50 chance if this actually works. Honestly, I have no idea if this can destroy the frame world or even the populations on it, or if it's going to simply detonate, rearrange some hyperlines, and then the organics get to survive. We either continue to be the saviour of the galaxy, or the exterminator of all organic life.
Place your bets now. Well, it made us easier to defend, but yeah, it destroyed the star base, which then instantly came back. The people are still very much alive. We are still the rescue of the galaxy. All organic life is now on our beautiful frame world, and so it will always be. Since I can't think of any other way to destroy the frame world. We can't abandon it, we can't target the system since it counts as a black hole with our beam. We are, sadly, forever a saviour. This was a really, really fun run. I absolutely adored this origin. I swear next time it will be the normal Katzen. I may even spawn in the Blockets, but I just thought this would be a okay origin, but it's turned into maybe my favourite. I love the different playstyle of it, and I think if you turned off scaling difficulty and had a not-so-friendly start, this might not be the most overpowered origin in Gigastructures. There's plenty stronger than this, in my opinion, in the early game. Later on, obviously, it gets ridiculous and becomes this mess. But this really has been a really enjoyable experience. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out with me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Next time, we'll take a look-see at the Katzen, which will likely be the last video on the Gigastructural Engineering mod in quite some time. There are loads of others which you've been suggesting lately, and I will be taking a look-see at them as soon as I have a little bit more spare time. So, thank you for watching, have a lovely day, and do take care. Goodbye. And maybe one day, you'll get to live in a paradise like this.